So we are back with our next installment of Inspiration to Installation. And today, oh, look, she's getting the gloves on. I'm getting the gloves on, man. Totally getting the gloves on. <laughs> today, we are going to talk about all things mixing. We get this question a lot, Kim. We uh, get asked, you know, um, am I mixing it right? Am I mixing it wrong? Am I mixing it too wet? How long should I mix it for? Can I mix it in a mixer? Um, all kinds of things. So what we thought we'd do is we go over today. I have my coffee. I am ready. Um, and in New Zealand, it's it's the evening. So, you know, she's, she's not got her coffee because then she'd be up all night. Um, I need it because I need to wake up. So... Today, what we're starting with is hand mixing because it's always the best way to start with hand mixing simply because, um, so when we did our classes in um, Boulder and, and Sacramento last year, what we found was that a lot of people didn't like putting the mask on. A lot of, I'm not wearing a mask. Um, so we know that people don't, we, we see you. Um, however, our product does contain um, cement, so, you really do need to wear a mask. But what we have found is, yes, you can still get some dust particles coming up. So how Kim mixes it is this way she's gonna show for us today. And we want you to, we're literally doing a follow along, okay? So if this is your first time mixing it, we always recommend doing it by hand. And why is that, Kim? Um, that way you can absolutely feel it. The very first couple of times you make Paltaya Premium, do it by hand because you should know what this feels like after you've done it a few thousand times. <laughs> Don't worry about it, but man, first time, best way to go. So yeah. let me get started. Now, you should wear a mask. I recognize people don't, but starting <laughs> off, we'll show you. Place it in the bowl. Don't dump it, you'll get a cloud. That's no fun. <laughs> so, place it in the bowl. Then, we call this by guess and by golly, because it is the <laughs> way that you will mix. And that is, you put a small amount of water in, just a bit, then take a towel and cover the bowl and mix, you can feel it. And in a very short period of time, all of that will wet out. There, and once it's wetted out, and mm -hmm. now you can see there's no dust. It's all wetted out. It's not quite where it needs to be. Eh, it might need. A teeny smidge more water. Tiny, 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 tiny smidge more water. See, it starts to resemble what we call rabbit poo. Well, I call it rabbit yeah. poo, where it goes into little kind of clumps. Um, yeah. well, eventually, you're going to push it until it starts feeling like a dough. And there's a point where it all agglomerates into a single mass. At that point, now here's a trick. Clean your bowl out. Literally scrape it. Yeah. So see, I can that's a clean bowl. Then it's very dough-like. And I want to start mixing it enthusiastically by hand. Now, as yeah. I mix it, it's gonna soften, and it's possible it's gonna soften too much. So I can add a little bit more powder into it simply by dunking straight into the bowl. This won't ever impart moisture to the bowl. It just picks it up. And so now I can continue to mix like so. And I'm gonna mix for about two minutes because I want every single particle of material. And there are many, many, many millions of particles in here and they all have to come in contact with water. Because if they're not coming in contact with water, they're not being part of the crystallizing process. And all cementious compounds are a crystalline growth. 
And that crystalline growth requires water to work. No water, no crystals. Okay, feels a little damp, but let's try it. So it's Come and show it feels the very soft. It hasn't been two minutes yet, so it doesn't count. Okay, come and show us on the. Off. Can you show us on the camera what it looks like? Come closer. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can see, it's a very soft, soft dough. I love the feel of it when it's like that. That's ah. so good. Now I'm going to do what's called a dangle test, and this is how we check if we've got the right amount of water. So pinch off something about the size of an egg. Roll it into a ball. Then roll it into a cone like that. Position it like so and flatten it into a wedge. Grasp it, see like so. And then you pinch it three times. Dangle it. And, and you have to do this down. Do no. <laughs> no, that's too wet. That's okay. too wet. Um, because it ripped under its own weight, there's too much moisture in this, and we need to take it out. So you can add more powder. Too slow. You get your towel, pop it on there, and then literally press the water out of it. Can you see that on screen? Yep. Okay. And then pop that, and now it will be just a little bit stiffer, but it'll be a little bit more silky and elastic. We want something that is doughy, almost like a, a sourdough bread. And it needs a bit more. And it always surprises me how amazing just doing that with a towel can just get it to that right consistency. It's amazing. <laughs> And it's important, you've got to hit that right consistency. And there's a reason for that. You want exactly 20% water. Not 19, not 21. <laughs> you want 20% water by weight or four to one by volume. And the only way you can tell that, well, there's two. You can weigh it and that yeah. takes time. Mm. Or the dangle test is great because it tells you, you have that or not. So circle, cylinder, mm -hmm. wedge. Now this side's about an eighth of an inch thick. That's about a quarter of an inch thick. Pick it up, one, two, three, and then we dangle it. And I should get a really smooth sheet, Ooh. 18 That's inches long. The moment it does that, you know you've got it right. If it doesn't yeah. go 18 inches, you got to do it again. And you only really need to do this like a few times, like Kim said, because yeah. once you once you've got that mix right, you'll you'll just know because it'll just feel right. It, it'll just you'll just right. yeah. But that way you can be assured that you have got it right. Yes, yeah. paying it will work. It's just time consuming, and I'm. I like going a little faster than that. So and at that door sure. stage, it's it's the perfect um, consistency for driving into that crushed tin foil. It's just it just works. It's just yeah. So it's a little. So I'm going to bring it up here so you can see. It's just a really soft, mm. squeaky, very pliable dough to it. It doesn't rip. It doesn't shred. It's just doughy. Yeah. Not too dry, not too shiny. Yep. So now the rule is the longer you mix this, the longer it will stay pliable. So two minutes, if you're doing it by hand, yeah, you've got about a 15 minute period of time where it's gloriously elastic and then it starts to stiffen up for its traditional pot life of about two hours. But if I sit back and I need and need this for another couple of minutes, I can take that super plastic state and pull it out a half an hour or longer. It's just really what you're in the mood for, which is why sometimes we use machines. Yes, this is my, my lovely machine. You'll be seeing that shortly. 
Um, yeah, this is a fabulous beast. That's so by hand. Yeah, that's a little long. I know, you know, you shouldn't be able to get a yard. <laughs> um, now we want to show people how to mix on the tabletop. Yes. So, um, so what we're going to do now is we showed you how to mix by hand. There's also another video that we will link above. Um, recently, Kim was making um, a Zapotec inspired flower pot. Um, and she started realizing that actually there was an easier way of mixing sort of biggisher batches of, of Peltai mm -hmm. Premium, also by hand. Um, but this is for people who maybe don't have the dexterity in their hands or they're finding it a bit, a bit you know, laborious to mix smaller batches or whatever. Um, this is an easier way of doing it that Kim has found. And so we thought we'd um, share and show you. So same thing. Same thing. Placing some into the bowl. And then do you, the towel that you put on top to mix under, do you um, dampen that? No, no. It captures the dust better if okay. it's dry. So, yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of there. Da -da. Da -da. Under the towel. And so I put oh. that in there, and now I am going to dampen that. It's, if you're doing a lot, it's good to wrap at your wrist yeah. because that keeps it really, really tight into the bowl. And if you've got a whole bunch of students around you, you want you don't want to be kicking up dust to somebody who's standing right next to you because that's yeah. just that's just rude. <laughs> it's just rude. Okay, so to wet it out, so you can see there's almost no dry particles left in there. Needs a yeah. skosh, more water, just a skosh. <laughs> so, can you see that? Yep. Okay. So, you can see it starts out clumpy like this, but as it begins to absorb that water, it begins to clump. And so, I'm trying to get it to the point. But that clumping comes together, and I could get everything out of that bowl. Yes. Now, the yeah, power bowls. of that is that when I want to clean this up at the end of the day, I simply get the same dry towel. I should wipe it out. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you got a much larger batch, and I just treat it as if... I am mixing dough, like so. Yep. Now it's a. This is a lot faster. Yes. And recognize it gets re-softened really fast. Now we and recommend so doing this. We recommend doing this on that surface, don't we? Because you don't want to be doing this on like a wooden table or anything that's going to suck any moisture out of it. So Kim's using a, yes. sort of a cutting mat. Um, yes, cutting mat. Yeah. And now it's really too soft. It's got a surface shine to it. And it's kind of, you know, lame. Yeah. <laughs> it's too limpy. So I'm going to just extract some water out of that really fast. Okay. Again, the first couple of times you make Palhaya Premium, make it by hand because yeah. you should know what the optimal feels like. <clears throat> okay, let's check it. So again, I'm going to do a dangle test. Cone. Wedge. Perfect. Well, oh, too wet. A little wet. Just a little too wet. No. Oh, onto the ground. You didn't see that. Take my hair off. <laughs> Oops. Uh, 
<laughs> you didn't see that. No, that won't be going in the video at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. I also take the time to clean the backs of my gloves by just pressing it up like that. Yeah, that's clever. Because once you hit that dirt state, it allows you to clean the gloves and the gloves will start getting neater and neater and tidier and tidier the more you work it. Hmm. Okay, so let me try this again. And what do we got? Nope, still just a little bit wet. Can I, so, can I let you in on a secret? Go for it. Sometimes my dangle doesn't go that long, but I just know the mix is right, and so I don't. Oh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> well, sometimes if the dangle doesn't go long enough, it may be that you have the perfect amount of water in it. It just needs a little bit more kneading. Yeah. Try that again. <clears throat> Size of an egg. Make a ball. Make a cone. Flatten it into a wedge. Yes, you've heard this one before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we do it a lot. Here's the dangle we did earlier. I now know that that is exactly 20% by weight water. And that means this material will be as strong as it can possibly be, provided you cure it correctly. But yeah. that's when it's at its greatest strength. People often make this material too wet. Don't do that. Yeah. Because making it wet weakens it. And we want your projects to last. We want them to be strong. And we're trying to show you the perfect way of doing it so that you get the results you want. Because, I mean, our product's been out for a while now, but in, you know, in certain countries, it's not been out for long. So these videos are a great way of showing people exactly what it's supposed to be like, because it is a new material. It is something that is unlike other things on the market. So it's very important that you get it right. Um, because we, yeah, we want you to have the best success with it. Um, hey, did I show folks something? Yeah. Is that really creep aside? Okay, where's that thing at? You're going to love this. Okay, I've just made a reasonably large batch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we made this, we made this today. So this much clay, this much Paltaya Premium, makes that. Hee <laughs> hee. So um, I will probably build one of these things after this demo is done because, well, I want to use this clay up too. <laughs> we want to show you how to use the mixer. So, and I have only recently started using my old Kenwood Chef mixer, and mm -hmm. it is so much bigger. Okay, this is a Kenwood Chef. This is a thirty-year-old. Kenwood Chef. And over the last five years, I have put 2.3 tons of material through this mixer. That's Crazy. how many batches I've mixed. And it's a workhorse. These are marvelous. They're such time savers. Yeah. Now, you do not want to ever use this for food again, right? So these old ones are amazing for, for this. Now, you can get them... <clears throat> You can get them online and things like that. But however, I was speaking to someone the other day and they told me that in America they went to get an old Kenwood chef or, you know, just a mixer. And they said the wattage in America is not that great. So I think it only goes to something like 800 watts or something like that. So mm. these Kenwood chefs are, are like a thousand watts. So they're they're so much more powerful. And yes, they're very old. But what she did was she actually went onto a website in the UK, purchased one got it sent to America and it was about $400 cheaper than if she bought one, an, an old one over there. And that was getting wow. it sent, which is insane. Um, but I have an old one that Kim and I bought actually when you were in the UK, where we were doing um, classes and 
it was so cheap. It was like, I think it was like $40 or something like that. Um, I mean, it used to be that these things were 50 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Now, you need, a, you need this. It's called a paddle. Yeah. That's the shaping that you want. Now, the reason we use bread mixers is because they have a shearing action. This, this clay, Altaya Premium, is a very, very, very fibrous material. And you need to shear those fibers until they essentially distribute uniformly through the mask. And so a cookie hook isn't going to do it. No. you got to use one of those. So... I love how it's like it looks like it's all like held together and gnarly and like dusty. It's like hey, <laughs> I love this mixer. We take care of this mixer. Now we also we don't want to kick up any dust, so we drape it initially with a towel, right? And my mixer, my Kenwood Chef, has a little um lid on it so it actually covers everything and you can lift up the side and just be pouring a little bit of water in as you need it. It's so cool. I'm just showing now, good. And she, she's got the fancy one. Mine's 30 years old. Now, just as we did before, by guess and by golly, we're going to put a little bit of water in there just to get it started. Again, you can measure this if you want. I'm yeah, we'll put the ratios on screen. And then, okay, make sure the towel goes all the way to the ground. You do not want to turn this thing on and wrap the towel around the spindle. Yeah. Bad thing. Don't do it. Oh, have you ever done that? <laughs> what? Have you ever done that? No, I haven't. And and even if I had, I would have admitted it. But no, I have never wrapped a spindle. <laughs> I'm not gonna either. That'd be a bad day. So we let it run. Do you put it on a, a fast setting, or I was putting mine on quite a slow setting? I can't hear what you're saying. Oh. Sorry. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you like la 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 la. I love you like la 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 la. I love you. Okay, let's do it with like some. Good. Now I can look inside this bowl. In fact, I'll pick it up so you can see it too. I didn't add enough water, but everything's wetted out. Yeah. Which means I don't need to keep the towel on it anymore because it's not going to kick up any dust. <laughs> I was asking, now, do, you put, do you put it on like a high setting or do you just put it on a kind of slow well, setting? Yeah. This is, it has, uh, what is it, eight settings? I do one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's just, just, it's really slow. Mm. In fact, you can see how slow that's moving. Yeah. And now I'm going to just put a little bit of water in there. And just like you were mixing with it by hand, you watch it. And what will happen? is it will start to stick together and start coming toward the shape that you want. So I'm slowly increasing the speed. We're up to two now. Ooh. And we just let it make. It's man, because it's doing all the work. I can read a book. I can listen to music. I can just walk away. Okay. I have a mixer like this that's 20 times the size. It's capable of literally mixing a half a bag of premium in one go. This is great because this is just a little tiny handful. Now it's starting to clump in little tiny balls. So it looks like little like rabbit droppings, which of course I should never say that in the video, but that's exactly what it looks like. And that will happen for a while, and then they'll start to agglomerate. And that's fine. I'll still just watch it. Almost there. Now the, the masses are starting to clump together a little bit more, a little bit more. And see, I'm still not doing anything. I'm just relaxing. I'm dancing. And, you know, it's fun. Yeah, just really cool. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And voila. It's done. And the great thing is the bowl is virtually clean. 
Yeah, so, what I found with, with mine when I was mixing it is um, the paddle, it started kind of clumping into the to the paddle and then I had mm -hmm. to kind of like prize it away from the paddle and then I cleaned the paddle so that, because I always remember you saying, remember and clean it straight away because else it'll, you know, it'll harden and then yeah. you're done. <laughs> yes, that is a significant role with a paddle and yeah. this mixer is, you clean it, and you clean it perfectly every time at the end of this, because for a machine that's had several tons of material in it, this machine looks in really good tick. It doesn't look like I've sent it through the ringer. You absolutely clean that every time. Now, a bucket of water that you can plunge it in really fast helps enormously. But yeah, and don't even let the stuff collect in the corners. Don't. Yeah. Because after the 4,000th batch, you don't want to be sitting back and chiseling this thing. Yeah. You want it to just work. Awesome. And that was so much easier than mixing it by hand for me. Like I was able to make much bigger batches. I could work a lot faster. It was, yeah, super. Well, the great thing is that while it's mixing, you can be doing something else. So just yeah. having it running off to the side while I'm sculpting means that I always have a fresh batch to hand. Yes. And I really like that. We do. There was one question that I had. So in the classes that we did and in my own mixing and stuff, you use towels a lot, right? Because you're you're using them to wipe bowls, you're using them to wipe down your table, you're using them for things. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be then putting that down your sink because it could clog your sink right so what ah, I was doing yes. what I was doing was I was just spritzing mine with some water and then letting it dry but it always had that kind of stiff towel feel and then it was like yeah it goes crusty and so then Kim was talking to me yeah Kim was talking to me the other day and she said oh I've found a solution for that and I was like we should tell people that because that's quite cool sure where'd I put it there it is. This is a bucket of water. So there's about uh, three gallons of water in here and either a half cup of citric acid, which you can pick up at a health food place, um, or vinegar, a cup of vinegar. And what it is, is all cementious compounds are alkali. Mm. This is acidic. It will stop the crystalline growth, absolutely stop it dead. So I was using, which tell this one. So this one I had used to dry stuff out. And yeah, that little bit of grain on there, that might actually get crusty. You just dunk it in the water and drain it out like that. And just let the water drain out naturally. And then I'm just going to take this towel and I'm going to go clip it on a line and let that wet towel dry of its own. But when I use it again, it'll be just fine. Yeah. You get a clamp. <laughs> Got a little clothing area over here that I clamp my towels on. So, yeah, that's a great way to make your towels last a really long time. Um, you can have, after you've done a either vinegar or citric acid wash, yeah, throw it in with the rest of uh, the laundry. You've used that bucket quite a few times. And then what do you do with the stuff that's in it when it's really dirty? And um, You let that, you pour it off, you let it settle. Yeah, pour it off, let it settle, pour it off, let it settle. And then eventually at the end of that, let the stuff at the bottom just dry to a powder and throw it away. Oh, okay, so it'll just dry away. And, oh, okay. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to create mud. You don't want to be washing it out. Um, yeah. yeah. You just Now, the stuff that's in the bottom of that, the small amount of particulates that have faded to the bottom will never cure. Yeah. Um, you still sort of dig down your sink. 
but they're never going to cure. And this is why, guys, it's so important not to get any vinegar or anything acidic next to your sculpture when it's curing, because it will yeah. eat it. <laughs> yeah, it will eat it. Well, also, it's a great way to open up a surface. Um, citric acid, in its truer form, um, will etch glass which of course is a crystal, but it's a really, really, really strong one. Citric yeah. acid just about etches anything. Um, so yes, it'll etch this material too. So thanks for going over that mixing with us. And we hope that um, that has answered all your mixing questions from hand all the way through to machine and the table in between. Oh, look at that, I'm a poet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I hope that answers all your questions. And if you do have any more questions about mixing, we do have other videos, which I will have linked to this one. Um, also, you can drop a comment below. We love to hear from you and we will get to your questions in some future videos, perhaps. So don't forget to leave them below either. Thank you, Kim. And um, we will see you next time on Inspiration to Installation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> see you later.